All right, now I want to show the Grafana Zabbix plugin. Now Grafana is another tool that you might come across for monitoring your service. Now Grafana uses time series data. That is a table full of data with all the values being time stamped as they're added. Now all Zabbix items are stored as time series data. So that means we can read that data in Grafana. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up the Zabbix plugin in Grafana, but it's just going to be a crash course on Grafana. Grafana is a very sophisticated system, a lot like Zabbix. So I'm only just going to show you what you need to get started. I do have a course on Grafana if you do want to take it further. But Grafana primarily focuses on the visualization of the data. So it puts a lot of effort into making the user interface very attractive. So if you really want a nice looking user interface over the data that you have in Zabbix, then Grafana is an option. And another thing, just to keep this simple, I'm going to install Grafana on my existing Zabbix server. This will just minimize the potential problems you're going to have. But if you're serious about this, then you should install Grafana on its own server. But then you'll have to manage firewall rules. So this is just a real quick introduction to Grafana. So anyway, we're going to need to install Grafana for your operating system, a bit like you do with Zabbix. You can find the instructions from this link here. I've already prepared that for my system, and that's these commands here. So the first one, which is going to install two extra libraries, there's a good chance I don't actually need, but these are the official instructions. So on my Zabbix server, I'm installing add user and lib font config one. Okay, so those things were already there, so it was unnecessary. Okay, I'm now downloading the latest Debian package for Grafana using wget. So note two, it's the open source version of Grafana. The open source version, you can just use out of the box without registering at Grafana. And that's the one I teach in my course as well. Although I do have some information about the cloud hosted Grafana service as well. But I recommend the open source version. So I'm installing 8.5.2 here. Also note the Grafana updates very regularly. So your version is likely to be different than that. There's a new version every couple of weeks. Okay, now to use the package manager to install it on my server. Okay, that's very good. I can now start Grafana and check its status and it's running. Very good. Now Grafana will be listening on port 3000 by default. So we can visit that in our browser. So the address you'll be visiting is HTTP, the Zabbix server domain name or IP, because I put that in my Zabbix server, colon 3000. Now I have a firewall on my Zabbix server. I won't be able to access port 3000 from my private network here. So I'm going to have to allow my IP address to access port 3000. So I'm on DigitalOcean. I'm going to my Zabbix firewall. I'm going to add a new rule for port 3000. So custom TCP 3000, I'm going to get rid of those and just add my external IP address, which is currently that, but it actually changes sometimes. So I'm going to use the CIDR notation version. Very good. And save that. Excellent. That is there. Now, if I try this URL, but I need to just modify it for my settings. My Zabbix server domain name was zabbix.spcode.net. So HTTP zabbix.spcode.net colon 3000. And it's HTTP because I haven't got an SSL certificate bound to port 3000. Enter. And that's taken me to the Grafana login page. And the default username and password is admin admin. Login. I need to enter a new password. Submit. Very good. And that is my Grafana user interface. Okay, so now I need to connect that to my Zabbix server. And I'm going to connect that via the Zabbix server's API. Okay, so go down to configuration data sources. I'm going to add a data source. Now, the Zabbix data source isn't going to be there normally. So you can search for that by typing Zabbix and it's not there. So we need to install the plugin first. So go down here to configuration plugins and we can start typing Zabbix here. And there it is there. So click that and press the install button. It's installing. Okay, so that's installed. We now have to enable it. So enable it. Okay, that's enabled. Now, if we go back to data sources and add data source, right at the bottom, there is the option for Zabbix. So click that. Okay, and we need to put in the URL of our Zabbix API endpoint. And that is the domain name or IP of your Zabbix server, slash Zabbix normally, slash API JSON RPC.php. Okay, so on my documentation, I've half prepared that. So I put that in. So my server has domain name and SSL. So I'm using HTTPS. 
sabix.spcode.net so https sabix sbcode.net slash sabix slash api underscore json rpc dot php server default this is the better way to do it this will make the connection server side rather than through your client browser okay Zabbix API details. The plugin will use the Zabbix API. I'll talk about the Zabbix API in later videos, but right now we need to set up a user in Zabbix that can use the Zabbix API. So back into Zabbix, I'm on administration users. I'm going to create a user. I'm going to call it Grafana. And the group is no access to the front end. That is good for API access. There's no need for using the front end when connecting through the API. It's just going to use that PHP script. Select. Okay, so add a password. It needs to be something slightly complicated. Okay, now everything else is okay. Go to permissions and we need to set the role. The role for this user role is good enough. User role is allowing us to read the data on the Zabbix system. It also says here access to API enabled. So that is good. Let's add that. Okay, that's good. I have a new user called Grafana. User role, no access to the front end. That's good. It's just going to be used by the API. Its status is enabled. There we go. And front end access disabled. Excellent. We can now test that in Grafana. So back into Grafana, my username I created was Grafana. And the password was... Okay, everything else is good. Leave everything else as default. This is good. And save and test. Okay, data source updated. Zabbix API version 6. So that shows me that that has worked. So it has connected. Now, one thing which was recommended in older versions of Zabbix and Grafana was to also set up the direct DB connection. But the system has become much better recently, so it's not really necessary anymore. But if you are serious about connecting Grafana to Zabbix and you're experiencing it to be quite slow, you can set up a direct DB connection to the MySQL server on the Zabbix server here. We create a MySQL data source here using these options here in Grafana and select that here so my documentation will have some information on how to do that if you're interested but I'm not going to do that in this example and if you are getting to that point where your Grafana and your Zabbix servers are slowing down because you're connecting it through Grafana you should review the kind of information you're trying to show in Grafana and whether that's actually necessary or not anyway that's an option for you okay so that is perfect now if we go back up and go to dashboards we can install a couple of default dashboards and that is Zabbix system status so let's import that let's import the next one and import the next one okay so there's three different dashboards that we can look at now these aren't going to work right away yet but we can still have a look at what we have so far so up here dashboards browse Zabbix server dashboard let's see what that looks like okay and yeah, no, there's no data coming through yet okay let's see what else we got there general Zabbix system status Okay, still nothing. Let's go back. General Linux server. Okay, so it's not showing us any groups, hosts, or network interface just yet. So we're going to need to modify the group that our Grafana user is using in Zabbix to be able to query all those hosts. Okay, so in Zabbix, Grafana, no access to the front end group. If we look at permissions, it says all groups, none. Remember, if it's a user role or it's a guest role, we need to explicitly add the permissions for all of our hosts. So select, I'm going to select all like that, select, then press read. So I'm going to give it read access to all of those things, then press add. And it's just updated that there. All groups read. Now update. Okay, it's good. Now going back into Grafana, let's refresh that. Still no data coming through. Let's try Zabbix server dashboard. Okay, so there's still nothing showing. Let's try another dashboard. Okay, Zabbix system status. Okay, so we're getting some information through. Disaster information one still hasn't fully updated all the data yet. Okay, let's look at the other one. So template Linux server. Okay, there we go. Host A, host B. I can look at each of those individually. There's a lot of information to look at. There's not enough time running yet to really fill up these just yet. Okay, let's try something else. Windows servers. Okay, 11 laptop, nothing there. It's not switched on. That's the server I'm making this video from. 
Anyway, I'm just going to let that run for another 10 minutes and see what happens when more data comes through. Okay, so it's been running for about five extra minutes now. There's still not any extra data coming through here. The problem here is the default templates worked in Zabbix 5, but not Zabbix 6, because Zabbix 6 now uses tags instead of previously it would use a concept called application. So just to quickly show you the difference there, if we were to go into CPU there, press edit, and we can look at the query down here. It says application CPU. If you just delete that and instead find one called component CPU, there we go. We start getting some data through. It's quite a lot of data to show there and just press apply. Okay, that's done. Let's do the next one for system load. So edit that. Okay, same thing. Get rid of application CPU and write component CPU. Look out of that. Let's get rid of what's written in there and try the different one. There we go. Load average. There we go. Load average, 15 minute average. So since version five to version six, the queries need to be updated. So you get better at working these things out the more experience you have with Grafana. But since Grafana and Zabbix and most other open source systems on the internet are not developed in parallel, you are going to have incompatibilities depending on the versions, but it's just something you get better at dealing with. So apply. Okay, but anyway, another way of looking at Zabbix data in Grafana is by using the explore option here. So explore, I'm just going to save that dashboard. Go back, explore. Now, make sure you have Zabbix selected here. You might have multiple data sources on your server at some point. Query mode, metrics, group. It's given us the options there. I'm going to select Linux servers, host being sbcode.net. Tag, we can get other tags, component CPU, for example, and then select one from here. So load average 15 minutes. Okay, that's the same as what we saw before. Okay, there's the table version, and that's the graph version. Bars, points, stacked. Excellent. So anyway, that's an introduction to Grafana. There's a lot to learn in Grafana if you're interested in Grafana, but you only really need it with Zabbix if you want more options over how you display graphs. Anyway, going back to the data source, my Zabbix data source, remember your URL of your Zabbix server, slash API underscore jsonrpc.php. You need to create a user in Grafana that is able to query the API. Use direct DB connection if you really need to. If you're finding you need to improve performance on how you're getting data from Zabbix into Grafana, save and test shows you that it's working at least. The user that you create, the group that it's in needs to have the permissions to read the hosts. So I've allowed read for all hosts, for all groups. Excellent.